everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ujwal. I'm a recently graduated chemistry student here in the DC area. I make videos on being pre-med, productivity, and lifestyle. So if any of those things sound appealing to you, please consider subscribing. Today's video is going to be talking about Anki and giving you guys a brief introduction to it. I know I've mentioned Anki in a lot of my previous videos and you guys have also mentioned in the comments that you'd like to see a video on it and so here it is. I'm going to be releasing a series of videos talking about Anki in depth and also showing you how I used Anki in my workflow for creating flashcards off of my MCAT content. I'm going to talk about in this video what Anki is and how it compares and contrasts with flashcard systems already out there like Quizlet. Then we're going to jump in and talk about why Anki works, what the principles are that it's based off of, and how that's really important for us to understand in order to use Anki effectively in our lives. Then I'm going to talk about the different types of flashcards. Primarily, there are three which you guys should really know about that you guys are probably going to be using the most throughout your Anki journey. And I'm going to go ahead and create another video after this one where I'm going to show you how I used Anki specifically in my MCAT workflow. So without further ado, let's get right to it. The first thing that we're going to talk about is what my personal experiences with Anki were. I learned about Anki in the middle of my MCAT preparation, and ever since I learned about it, I jumped right in and used it for honing in on my psych -so concepts because that subject really required a lot of memorization. And then I also used it to commit the general chemistry concepts into my long-term memory. Now, the point at which I realized that Anki was a game changer was after my MCAT period, when I started using Anki for my undergraduate courses as well. I immediately realized that it allowed me to save a lot more time when it came to studying, and it also maximized my performance. So I saw my scores go up in terms of my uh, exams, and doing so in less time with less preparation was, it was really mind blowing to me. And so that's really the point at which I realized, wow, Anki is, there, there's a lot more to this tool than people would initially think. And frankly, I wish I had known about this when I had started my undergrad career, because I would, I would have used Anki for every single class I took. Um, and so that's really where my, um, that's really why I'm such a huge proponent of Anki, why I think everyone should be using it. Now, what is Anki? So for those of you who don't know, Anki is essentially a flashcard software, just like Quizlet. So um, the, the way all these flashcard systems, such as Quizlet, Anki, or even just standard index cards work is, they work off of actor recall. They have a question on one side and an answer on the other. So you're basically quizzing yourself, you're testing yourself. Now research has shown that that is the most effective way that you can review material and prepare yourself for any kind of testing situation. So the reason why Anki is a little bit more special is that it's set apart from all these other flashcard systems because it essentially comes with this little icing on top called spaced repetition, which we're gonna talk about shortly. Now, Anki can be accessed through a web app, just like Quizlet, um, where you can access all your decks, sub decks, whatnot. And there's also an app. Now, the app is a little bit more expensive. It's like 20, 25 bucks, but uh, to me, it was well worth it because I used Anki throughout my junior uh, year and also throughout my senior year for all my science classes, and it really was a game changer. So um, that's basically it as an intro for Anki. Now, what are the fundamental principles upon which Anki is based and how does Anki work? So there's two pillars here. We got active recall, we got spaced repetition. So active recall works uh, in very stark contrast to passive learning, which most students are used to doing. So what a lot of students do before the exam, um, this is something that I heard a lot from my peers, is they would either go through the textbook a few days before the exam, go through the textbook, read the relevant sections, maybe even take some notes, and then maybe even review those notes before the exam. Now, the problem here is reading and comprehending and understanding and, you know, really just getting the gist of what's going on, it, that does not equal uh, the same thing as you knowing the material. Because sometimes, even after you go through this process, your performance on the exam doesn't demonstrate, it doesn't demonstrate uh, that you actually know the material. And I think a good analogy for really what I'm talking about here is sports. Think of learning like a sport. Let's say you're trying to learn tennis. You watch a lot of game footage. You go ahead and learn the different basics. You learn the fundamentals. You learn the techniques of a forearm, of a backhand, of a serve. But it doesn't mean when you step out in the court, you're going to perform like Roger Federer. Um, that's just not going to happen. You're not going to perform at an exceptional level just because you know every single details because you need to actively engage with those techniques. You gotta practice. And that's the only way in which you're gonna really hone in those skills and you're gonna be able to perform in different settings and whatnot. Same thing with learning. 
learning is really a lot more than just reading and understanding. You need to actively engage with the material. Active recall in which you ask yourself a question and you essentially are forced to recall that information from memory and recite whatever piece of information you're being asked, that is allowing you to actively engage with the material. I remember something that I learned um, a couple of years back and it essentially goes uh, in the following way. The best way to confirm whether you know a concept the way you should is if you're able to teach it to someone. Um, if you're able to teach the concept to someone or explain the concept to someone um, on a very basic level, that means you know the concept quite well yourself. Active recall is really just and is really just another form of doing so. By asking yourself questions and giving, essentially reciting the answers, you're gonna be doing this concept of essentially teaching someone the concept. Um, and so that's really why active recall works. Now, the next pillar is spaced repetition. This is the icing on top that sets Anki apart from every other flashcard tool out there. Now, spaced repetition maximizes retention and minimizes the amount of time spent studying. How does it do so? So we need to go ahead and talk about another concept called the ebbing house decay curve. So this is actually an MCAT psych social section. So if you're studying for the MCAT, um, the, this can help you for, uh, for that concept. So basically, this is what the curve looks like. And so a man named Ebbinghaus realized early on that, you know, let's say I learned some concept today. Let's say I read chapter one of bio today. Right now I have 100% of the information in my mind. After 20 minutes, and so you, as you see, this is an exponential decay. After 20 minutes, I'm gonna lose a good chunk of the information. I'm at like 60% retention right now, or 55% retention. After a day, it gets even worse because of exponential decay. And now I'm at like, what, 25 to 30% retention? So I just forgot a large chunk of what I remembered. That's how memory works. We tend to forget things at this exponential rate. Now, what essentially Anki does is it incorporates this concept of spaced repetition to help us maximize um, our retention by minimizing the amount of time we spend learning. So how does it do so? This is what Anki does. This is a graph that represents that. So let's say, you know, day zero, we learn the material, great. After one day, we're down to 80% retention, so we forgot 20% of what we learned, all right? Now, what you do is, or what Anki is gonna do is, it's gonna go ahead and let you review the cards now, and you're gonna go back all the way up to 100% retention when you review the cards. Now, what happens is, it's gonna take you three days instead of one day to get to 80% retention, so it takes longer for you to forget that information. And as you can see, that interval is gonna keep getting bigger and bigger as you keep reviewing the material at subsequent intervals. So that's how spaced repetition works. Anki is going to essentially allow you to review cards which you're weakest in, in a defined interval. And cards you're really good at are gonna have a larger interval. So essentially you don't need to spend time reviewing concepts that you really already know really well. You just need to be spending time on concepts that you're weakest in. And Anki is an excellent resource for allowing you to do so. All right, so why does Anki work? We talked about it, Octave Recall, Spaced Repetition. Now, how does Anki know whether you know something really well or not? You essentially interact with Anki with these buttons at the bottom of your flashcard. So once you answer a question, it's gonna ask you to choose one of three options. Again, good or easy. So if you really didn't know the concept at all, you couldn't recall it well, you're gonna press again. And it's gonna show you the card again in a very short interval. Good, if you really did know the concept, you press good and it's gonna show you the card in a longer interval. Now you press easy if you really knew the concept well, you really don't think you need to see this for a while and it's gonna show you the card in a much longer interval. Usually I don't recommend people and I also don't press the easy button just cause I know the way my mind works, I'm gonna forget the material, I wanna see it a little bit more sooner. So that's why I usually press good and if I really didn't know it, I go for again. So usually again and good are the ones you're gonna be most commonly using. And I'm gonna also show you how this works in another video that I'm gonna make right after this. I'm talking about how I make my own Anki flashcards and review them. Okay, so that's it for the basics of Anki, guys. Um, that's what Anki is and how Anki works and why you should use it. Um, so hopefully at, by this point in time, you guys have gotten a good understanding of the tool and why I really like it. Um, now we're gonna go through a brief introduction for the different types of flashcards you have. Really, there's only three that you gotta understand and know because these are the ones you're gonna be using um, and they're the following. So first things first, we got the basic flashcards. These are basically the same thing as standard index cards or Quizlet. You have a front, ask yourself a question, 
and then the back with the answer. So nothing really unique going on here. And at the bottom of every card, now here's what I want you guys to use. You have the option to put in tags. Definitely put in a tag for what, you know, if you're doing a psych concept, do a psych tag, just write in psych. Um, or, you know, if it's a bio concept, a biochem concept, if it's genetics, I like to have tags because it allows me to review certain concepts at my leisure later on in custom study sessions, which you can do in Anki. You can learn every single card you want, whenever you want, irregardless of the Anki algorithm without messing it up. And that's the beauty of Anki. So always make it, uh, always take advantage of the fact that you can add tags here. So that's basically it for the basic flashcards. It's a really simple type of card and usually you won't be using it. I don't recommend people use it. I don't use it myself because I usually use closed deletion. So this is the second type of card you guys gotta know. This is the one you're probably gonna be using the most. So here's what the card's gonna look like. You have text. So this is where you put in the question and the answer as I will show you. And then you have another one for extra. So this is where you put in information that you wanna see, um, which is gonna give you more context around the card. So when you're learning stuff, when you're trying to, you know, commit things to memory, visual aids, mnemonics are excellent resources to help make sure that that stuff sticks in your mind. And in the extra section, that's the exact kind of stuff you want to put. So let's say, for example, in the text, I have a question, what are the different parts of the eye? And I go ahead and write out the different parts of the eye for my answer. And then I put that in this little closed deletion, which I'll talk about. But Probably one of the best ways to understand the different parts of the eye is to see a little diagram of the different parts of the eye. And so I'm gonna to go to Google Images, I'll pop up an image, put that over here. And in addition to that, I may also watch a Khan Academy video. And if I have a good diagram in a Khan Academy video, I'll just take a screenshot and put that in the extra section so that I have that whenever I'm looking back at my flashcard. Let's say I get this wrong a couple of times, I really gotta review the concept. I don't need to go outside of Anki and look at my notes or whatnot. I mean, I could if I really wanted to, but I have a reference resource right there in the extra section. And so that's really what makes closed deletions amazing. First of all, it helps you actively test specific pieces of information that you need to be, you wanna be tested on. Um, so it gives you more flexibility than a basic flashcard. And then the extra section, you get to put stuff you really wanna, you know, you wanna use to help you better understand the concept tested in the card if you get the card wrong. And then the standard tag section, make sure you take use, make use of the tags. So here's basically what it looks like. Well, this is like me creating a, a sample flashcard. So here's my question. What is this software? And always ask yourself questions. Active recall questions are the best way to do active recall. And then here's my answer. So my, my answer is, uh, what is this software? So it's Anki. And then I'm gonna go ahead and there's a keyboard shortcut. So you press command, shift and C to go ahead and put this word under these brackets. And then this is what it looks like. When I'm testing myself with this uh, with Anki, I'm going through my reviews for the day. It's going to show me the flashcards. They're going to look like this. There's my question. My answer is blocked off. Um, once I go ahead and recite the answer, so Anki, I press spacebar. It'll show me the answer. I confirm whether I, how well I knew it or not based on uh, the buttons at the bottom, like I showed in the previous slides, um, where I'm going to go ahead and tell it again, good or easy, and the Anki algorithm will update the interval in which I'm going to see this card again. And that's basically how it works. So that's closed deletion. Now, the last card type that I want you guys to know, which is really important. Um, this is a very important card type. Um, and I highly encourage you guys to use this as much as possible. The is the image occlusion enhanced. So this needs to be downloaded using an Anki add-on. I'll add that in the description below. But basically what you do is this is what it looks like when you open the card, image occlusion enhanced. Don't worry about all these fields. I, I don't usually do anything with this stuff. I just go up here and then I press this button. It's like a little picture frame. So it's gonna open up this window. So let's say there's a diagram. I wanna, you know, I wanna understand the different parts of this diagram. Um, basically what I do is let's say I went to Google images. I'm just gonna copy the image. And if it's already in my clipboard, it's gonna automatically show up here. But if not, just go down here at the bottom, press change image, and then select whatever image you want. Now, here's why image occlusion is amazing. So basically what you can do is you can block off these pieces of text. So when I essentially shown the flashcard during my reviews, I'm gonna be asked to essentially figure out what these different parts are. All I'm gonna be seeing is the arrows to the different parts. And I need to figure out what they are. So it's gonna do that for either all of them at once or for each individual one that you can basically go ahead and um, choose how you want the card to be shown based on these options down below. But basically this allows you to, first things first, test yourself on diagrams. So this is the best way to learn 
anatomy, for example, or any other kinds of um, any other kinds of visual pieces of information. Um, and so if you guys have like diagrams or pictures or graphs or charts that you guys need to remember, um, the best way to use, the best way to remember them is, yeah, you can create closed deletions for them, like that's fine, but the image occlusion enhanced works really well because your mind likes to think of things in like a geographical space. So basically here, if this image, even after it's blocked off, I'm gonna have a good understanding of where the parts are, what the names were, just because that's how our minds work. They like to digest visual pieces of information a lot better than textual pieces of information. And so that's basically it for the image occlusion enhanced. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to use the closed deletion and the image occlusion enhanced in actually making Anki flashcards for the MCAT um, in an upcoming video in this series. So um, I highly encourage you guys to take a look at that. And if you guys have any questions, as always, just go ahead and leave them down in the comments down below um, or send me an email if it's a longer question or a DM. I do respond to all Instagram DMs. So I hope you guys are staying safe and doing well and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.